thousands of years ago, a group of people came together and they did something impossible. Wielding the very powers of creation as a weapon, they managed to kill a god. And no, it wasn't just any other god, but the god Adonazium, the being credited with the creation of the Cosmia. This act shattered Adonazium's power into 16 primal shards, each one guided by one of Adonazium's intents. These shards were then picked up by those who were present, and each one ascended to godhood, mortal no longer. These gods then scattered to the ends of the Cosmia and wrought great and terrible things with their newfound power. Ati and Leras had always been best friends. We don't know where they grew up or how they met, but their friendship was something even Sephandrius remarked upon. The two of them were present during the shattering, or they had a hand in it. With Adonazium dead and its power strewn before them, Ati picked up the shard of ruin. The divine sense of entropy, that part of God that ensures that all things will end. Let us claim the shard of preservation. The shard that yearned for stasis. It yearned for things to stay as they were, to endure unchanged and unhampered through the eons. These were opposite intents. Isn't it curious then that they were picked up by these two best of friends? One of the things decided upon by this newly minted pantheon was that each shard would stick to its own business they would not interfere with one another. This is the rule that Ati and Leras immediately disregarded. They went off together into the further reaches of the Cosmia, to a cold and empty space devoid of any light. There was nothing but the glint of far-off stars, some space debris and the occasional flowering of some distant sun. We don't know how long they stayed in this blackness before Leras felt the yearning to create something. We don't know how far each vessel had submitted to the will of its shard, but it's worth thinking about. Was it just Leras who wanted this or was it the investiture he wielded? Preservation yearned to make life, to create a world and seed it with people and beings, but such a notion was impossible for him. His intent was to preserve things, to let them stay as they were. He could not create something, for this was to introduce change into the equation. So he sought out Ruin and told him of his desire. Ruin had no such impulse driving him to create things, but he yearned to destroy. So these shards came to a compromise. Joining their power, they would create a world. Being a mix of their opposing powers, each of the things they created will not be stagnant but will be capable of both change and death. Upon completion of their great work, they agreed on one final thing. This world will not last forever. After a certain amount of time, ruin will be allowed to destroy it. And so each of their desires will be sated. And that, my friends, is how Scadriel came to be. Each shard holds within itself a wealth of knowledge, things that the mortal within it comes to understand instinctively. Thus, Leras and Dati, through the proportions and measurements that Adonazium had used to create human beings before, and they used this as their prototypes to make their own versions. They made dogs and trees and all manner of things, seas and rivers and mountains and spreading carpets of grass. It was a beautiful world. Upon its completion, preservation looked down at it with wonder in his heart. But he also wept. How could it be that this fair vision was destined to be destroyed? How could ruin not see that such beauty deserved to flourish? He yearned then to effect some sort of change, to rip their contract in two and consign it to flames. For he wanted to shield and nurture this fledgling world and its people. But he was powerless, for the pacts of gods are not as the covenants of men, so easily broken and discarded. The years span by, and Scadrial, civilizations and culture advanced as various people began to stretch their intellect and broaden their understanding to ask what is beyond the horizon. 
Ruin and preservation were worshipped as gods in one religion, but there were a hundred different others. For men seek divinity in a hundred different directions, but most of the time the faith seems to matter more than truth. Or maybe there are just a thousand different facets of the same truth. Ruin watched all of this with relish, for the day that promised day was hearkening closer, and he yearned to rain fire upon this thing they had made. Beside him, preservation watched his old friend, now masked in the veil of a dark god, who knew that he could not let him destroy their world. Gods cannot break their contracts, I said, but behind this god's power, there was a man. A relic of a bygone age, perhaps, a man who had risen far and done too much. But he was still a man, with all the wiles and guile of that species. So he found a way around the restrictions of his godhead and turned against his former friend. Preservation tore apart his own power and forged chains from it, chains that he then used to bind ruin. He went further and stole part of ruin's own power and hid it in the world below. Leras was now weakened and reduced to a state of base existence, a creature of instinct. His own power was impotent as much of it was committed to binding Ruin to his prison. But this was not enough, for preservation knew that Ruin would eventually break free of this bondage. He made one last contingency plan, one that relied on the ingenuity and duplicity of the human beings they had created. Down on schedule as peoples looked up, they saw a certain deepness rising. Something was off in the skies. Something was off in their prophecies. Also, the histories tell us. We only know that a certain hero rose up to face the challenge and to save humanity. They call him the hero of ages.